If you are currently leveling up your Django skills with this tutorial, this tutorial is part of a free YouTube playlist. The link to the whole playlist is in the video description. Now, if you love this tutorial and playlist, then you might also like to check out the whole course Django Database ORM Mastery on Udemy. The link to the course, which should provide the best price, can be found in the video description. If you watched the previous tutorial, introducing health checks, we pretty much now have all the information we need to get started implementing health checks within our workflow to ensure that the Postgres database is running successfully before we start to migrate our Django models. First of all, find your way back to the test database container PI file. Here we have defined the container configuration. So it's just a case of now extending this configuration to include the health check. I just happen to have a code snippet for a health check for our Postgres database. So I'm just gonna lift that in. You can see I've added some notes for you, but I'll quickly run through this. So first of all, I'm going to create a health check configuration, not directly include it within the container config here. This just allows me to view this separately and make changes easily. Just differentiate it from the container configuration, which can make it easy for us to, to read ultimately. So here you can see what we're going to be doing is running a command. So the health check will be running the command. This command is the PG is ready command. Now, as I explained in the previous tutorial, that command is used to check the status of our Postgres database. Now, when we run PG is ready, it performs a simple connection check to the Postgres server. The command will return an exit code that indicates the status of the connection. So you have four potential connection codes, zero, one, two, and three. So really we're only interested in zero. We want to make sure that the server is accepting connections. So if it does return zero, then that means that the server is accepting connections. If it returns the status code of one, two or three, that simply means that the server is either not ready to set, accept connections or there's some sort of uh, failure to connect to the server. We have also specified that this command will run in the shell. Okay, so we've got four other parameters for us to configure. Now, this is all configured in nanoseconds, but you can convert this into seconds, no problem. So we have interval. So that's the amount of time between the health checks. So in this case, this represents one second. So every second, this health check is going to be performed. Now, you might want to change those. I'm just going to set it for one for now. So we have a timeout. So this is the amount of time to wait for the health check to complete. Now, currently it's at one second, but let's just change that to say five seconds. So when the health check test is being run, when the command is being run, it's gonna wait five seconds for it to complete. So we also have the retries. So after five retries, we're gonna consider that there is an issue here. And that's going to return an unhealthy status code in the health check. And then last of all, we have the start period. So start period before health check starts. So in this case, two seconds, because in this scenario, if you remember when we run a Postgres database, typically there is an initialization phase and that's going to take a couple of seconds. So we don't necessarily want to run a health check straight away. So we're going to wait a couple of seconds, in this case, two seconds before we actually start running the health check. Right, so now we need to integrate that within our container configuration. So maybe under volumes here, let's go ahead and add our health check. Let's uh, pass in the health check config. There we go. Now that we have our health check in place, we have a way of determining whether our Postgres service is running correctly before we go ahead and migrate our Django models. Right, so let's get back down to where we created the code to actually start the container. So first step, let's go ahead and start the container. That's absolutely fine. And now what we need to do is wait for the Postgres database to be ready. So let's uh, add a, or create a new function called wait for Postgres health check. And then we pass in the container. 
because obviously we're working with the container that has started. So let's build now the function for this. A bit further down. Okay. So let's pass in the container and let's set a timeout to say 60 seconds for now. Explain that shortly. So what we're going to need to do now then is to wait for the Postgres SQL container to be ready and then adjust timeouts as necessary based upon your environment. Right, so the idea here is to, well, let me draw this out. Okay, so we've already set the timeout. So we have this uh, timeout, which is set to 60 seconds. Okay, so that represents how long we're going to check the container, the health status. If we don't get a health status within 60 seconds, then we're going to then return an, the error that the container did not become ready within that specified time. Okay, so that's what the timeout is for. So we're going to run this check for 60 seconds. So what we need, we need the start time. So that's the first thing that we need to do. We need to grab the start time. So let's say that was a 1300, one o'clock. Right, so once we've got the start time, what we can then do is grab the actual time and then we can take it away from the start time. And from that, we can then work out how much time has passed. Okay, so we have the current time and then the time that we started this process. Right, so we always want to make sure that that is less than 60 seconds because that's, that's our timeout time. Okay, so we're going to use this code with, within a loop. And we're going to loop for essentially 60 seconds, after which we're going to return an error saying that we, the container didn't become ready or else hopefully within that time, the health check would have been completed. Right, so let's give this a go. So we need a start, start time equals let's get time dot time. So the current time. So we're going to need to import time. There we go. Right. Oh, apologies. Right. So that's time. So we're now going to need to loop. So while the time dot time, the current time, take away the start time is less than the timeout. So while we haven't performed this loop for over 60 seconds, we're going to perform some sort of action. So we're going to try. So first of all, we're going to reload the container. And that doesn't mean restart in the container. We're just going to refresh uh, all of the container attributes. Okay, so we get the latest version or the latest status, the latest information regarding the container. So if container status, so first of all, we're going to just grab the contain status. So if it's containers running, then we want to perform the additional check and that's going to be the health check. So we don't want to perform a health check if the container isn't running. So we may as well check that first, right? So if uh, check, so we're going to need to build a new function for this. So check for Postgres health, pass in our container, health of this container, then let's go ahead and print health check past there we go okay so we're going to need to build that shortly and then we'll just return true okay so let's build that function first so this is going to be the check postgres health function so this is where we want to now actually gather the information from the health check to check the status of our container. So to gather that, we need container dot attributes. So we use the get to get the information, which is the state information. Um, so dot get in there, we're looking for the, the health status. And if you saw the previous tutorial, we saw an example of that data being returned when we run docker ps 
So we're going to grab the health data. Right, so remember there are a few different status codes that might be returned. So it's going to return starting, the health check is still initializing, healthy, the health check command is passed, or unhealthy, the health check command is failed. So three possible outcomes. So we're obviously looking for healthy. So let's go ahead and return health.get uh, status equals healthy. Okay, so true or false, returning whether the health check is healthy or not. So let's remember to pass in the container. So we're working with the container that we started. And now let's finish this try block. So what we might like to do after we print is if the if the container hasn't started running, let's just go ahead and sleep. Let's just wait a couple of seconds, maybe one or two seconds. If the container hasn't started, we can do that. And let's now complete the accept. So if we just grab any exceptions and print those out. So F error checking container status. And let's pass out the, the error information. Right, so in addition to that, just something else we might like to do. Remember we are calling the, apologies, the start database container here. So what we might like to do is return something. Now let's return, let's return the container so that maybe we can perform additional functionality on it. One of those things being actually removing the container once the tests have been completed. So we're gonna return the container. Everything is now in place. So we're waiting for the check to take place. Um, we might want to create some sort of print here. So let's print uh, Postgres is ready. Don't need that obviously, but just so that we have some additional information for debugging, should there be any errors, we will be able to work out roughly where the error maybe has occurred. So last of all, let's, let's see this in action, I guess. So let's uh, run PyTest. Okay, let me do that again, actually. Um, let's run PyTest with VS flag. So container has stopped. The test container has started. So it looks like we're just waiting for the database to start. So if I just move back up again, see the code. So it looks like the health check did pass. Postgres is ready. And you can see we did have a an error, but that at the moment isn't a problem that we need to deal with. The fact is that what we have developed so far is working as intended. And now we can move on to the next stage of thinking about migrating our data. And through that process, we've fixed this error that keeps occurring here. Settings.database is improperly configured.